going on, Jerome's. So Kirk Cousins watch day 1,972. So Kirk Cousins and his free agency decision, will he stay or will he go now, uh, is the, the crux. And it really is going to shape what the Vikings are going to do this offseason, both the free agency and the draft. Now, uh, if and when Kirk Cousins does leave, obviously potentially going fishing in the draft. Uh, you and me going fishing and try and find a quarterback. Hmm. potentially trading up or sticking and picking at 11 or uh, taking one in the second round or trading up back in the first. There's lots of options there. And Vi- Vikings, even if Kirk is back, frankly, should be looking for the quarterback of the future. Also, uh, part and parcel of that is like, hey, especially if you don't get a top three quarterback, uh, maybe one of those other quarterbacks needs a little bit of seasoning. So bring in a bridge quarterback, a veteran that you feel fine starting a handful of games, waiting until the kid is ready to rock and roll, all that stuff. And I'll Oh, it's a, ooh, bring in Tannehill. Ooh, bring in, uh, you know, bring in Russell Wilson because of his weird contract thing with the with the Broncos, where he can sign for the league minimum. Ooh, bring in Tyler Huntley. All, all that stuff. But what what about a guy that's already in house? What about Nick Frickin Mullins? Uh, like a BDN. Uh, what about him as the bridge quarterback uh, in the event that Kirk leaves and the Vikings do draft a, a quarterback of the future, where Mullins can be like, hey. Look at me. Look at me. I, I'm the quarterback one now. And Nick Mullins last year. So it's kind of unfortunate where if Nick Mullins wasn't on IR after Kirk Cousins got hurt, do we even see Jaron Hall? Do we even trade for Josh Dobbs? It's kind of a weird spot. But you know, Nick Mullins was the backup quarterback for the Vikings over the last two seasons. And frankly, when he got on the field last year, he looked pretty damn good. Uh, nearly put up uh, two 400-yard games against the Lions and their, their vaunted defense. I mm. uh, had a you know, big part of the shootout in Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because uh, a couple of big time mistakes uh, in those games really cost the Vikings. But that that is exactly what you get with Nick Mullins. Like he is Southern Miss all time leading passer, uh, and he broke a lot of records of the guy that he emulates, Burt Favor. Also. I forget when we did up this graphic because Kyle Sluter started his football career as a tight end at Southern Miss. That's funny to me. Anyways, but uh, you know, with Nick Mullins, he is a functional game manager, but he also has some gunslinger tendencies, uh, throws a catchable ball, does have decent arm strength, and he operates the offense. He delivers accurately in rhythm. He, he was one of the OG uh, Kyle Shanahan quarterbacks where he got a bulk of his starting uh, experience with the Niners before they traded for Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, so uh, all, all that stuff does factor in. Yeah, and, and Nick Mullins, like he, he, it does add up where he's a decent veteran backup quarterback who you know c- certainly can operate the offense. And frankly, like we said before, I think the passing offense uh, it looked the best that it did outside of Kirk Cousins with when Nick Mullins was in there. It, it didn't look the best under Dobbs, and it did not look the best under Jaron Hall. Uh, so it could be a spot where Nick Mullins could be a candidate to be that bridge quarterback. And here's five reasons why: Number one, two years in the Kevin O'Connell system. So the Vikings traded for Mullins after. It was pretty clear that uh, Kelamon and Sean Mannion uh, weren't going to be the guys in 2022, so traded for him right at, right before the start of the season, and he's been in the system for two years, can operate the passing offense, uh, like we said, uh, and... The, the, the Vikings can put up points. The Vikings can march down the field and put some crooked numbers up there, which is what you need uh, with uh, the bridge quarterback there. Also, being able to get the ball to J.J. is going to be a number one. And J- Justin Jefferson uh, was able to put up 29 catches, 463 yards, two touchdowns on 34 targets uh, in four games with Nick Mullins. Uh, although, remember, Mullins started three of the games. He came into halftime for Jaron Hall against the Packers. And so 16 yards per catch, which is pr- still pretty damn good. So, JJ can put up numbers and Mullins understands that, hey, I have to get the rock to my playmakers and that's exactly what I'm going to do. The three games that uh, that Mullen started since he in both Detroit games, uh, JJ had 10 plus targets. So he definitely knows where his bread is buttered. And I feel like if Kirk leaves, you know, that that could be a major uh, issue with JJ and signing his extension. But if you sell him that, hey, we are going to start Nick Mullins, which you I mean, you got nearly half of your yards uh, from Nick Mullins uh, last season. And also, he didn't put you in the hospital like Josh Dobbs. And uh, we will get the rookie quarterback TBD up to speed, whether that's you know a top three guy, which I feel like if you trade up heaven and earth for May, Williams, or Daniels, you're probably going to start him right away. But the second tier of guys, you know, the Penix, the Knicks, the McCarthys, the Travis, the Rattlers, uh, well, 
depending if uh, Travis is going to be ready medically. But uh, those guys definitely you know could sit at the start of the season. It's like, hey, JJ, we're going to get these young guys up to speed. They're going to be the quarterback of the future. But until then, uh, we're going to put in the guy who can certainly slang it and ain't afraid to put the ball downfield and put up some points, and, and we'll go from there. Also, he's already signed. He's already signed. He's already factored into uh, the 2024 salary cap, and he's making a uh, just above league minimum base salary 1.7 uh, million bucks. So uh, that definitely is uh, is. Uh is a factor uh, in his, his favor. Uh, lastly, he's young. He still has some upside. He's 28 years old, so he's not like he's a 33, 34-year-old backup. So uh, I think I'm not ready to say that he would be a regular starter, uh, but could you get through a year with him as the guy? Uh, I think you certainly could. And he does have uh, some significant starting experience from his time with the Niners and a little bit with the Raiders. And last year, starting and playing experience uh, certainly is valuable, uh, given the fact that uh, it's in the existing system and with largely the same personnel. Also, I I forgot he led the game-winning drive against the Raiders. The field goal. Good times, man. It's good times. But, you know, could... Uh, Nick Mullins uh, be the bridge quarterback if the Vikings lose Kirk Cousins and if the Vikings bring in a rookie who they don't feel comfortable starting with week one? Yes, uh, I think that certainly could be a plausible solution. It's not the sexiest thing in the world. Like It's not going to move the needle much, and a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of fans would be like, oh, what about Russell Wilson? Oh, what about Mariota? Oh, what about Huntley, et cetera? But could it be the best, you know, given the situation, given the money, given Mullins' experience, uh, given uh, Mullins can get the ball to J.J.? Yes. I think it does make sense, even though, again, it's not the sexiest thing in the world, uh, but sometimes sexy is sec- not sexy is sexy, as evidenced by me. Hmm. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, could Nick Mullins be the bridge quarterback for the Vikings this season? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more, the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.